In this video, we'll talk about plants. We'll start with discussing the parts of a plant, and then we'll move on to the classification of plants into different types. Let's begin with the parts of a plant. So everything above the ground that you see is called the shoot system. Everything below the ground is called the root system. Now, let's dive into the shoot system. This part that you see highlighted here, that's called the stem. The stem provides structure to the plant. The stem is what supports the leaves, fruits, buds, flowers, everything. The stem is also important for transportation. It provides transportation for food, water, nutrients through a pipe-like structure that lies inside the stem. And that's what helps transporting all these things. The stem also stores nutrients. Uh, a nice example where the stem stores nutrients is a potato. The potato is actually a stem which stores nutrients. Next, we will discuss about leaves. I've highlighted a few leaves here. I guess we all know what leaves are. Leaves are green in color usually, and they're usually flat and thin in shape. Leaves are like the kitchen of the plant. Leaves are what prepare food, and they do this through a process called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants make usable energy using carbon dioxide and water. This happens during the day because this needs sunlight. Only in the presence of sunlight is photosynthesis possible. The word photo suggests that it's got something to do with light, right? Next, we've got flowers. Flowers are really beautiful and they exist in various colors and shapes. Let me, uh, you know, show you a short slideshow of a few flowers. Here's a rose, white, beautiful rose. We have a tulip here. We have another interesting flower, the cauliflower. Yes, this is a kind of flower. Then we've got a lotus, and here's a crepe flower. You must have seen this quite a lot around town. Okay, the slideshow is over. Let's get back to the class. The flower is the part of the plant that engages in reproduction. So the flower usually turns into a fruit, parts of the flower turn into the fruit, and it's within the fruit that the secret to reproduction lies, right? You guessed it right. It's the seeds. The seeds of, that, are, of, that are inside the fruit, they are what are responsible for reproduction, and the seeds are produced by the flower, and they're usually placed within the fruit. Seeds have the ability to, you know, make a new plant, so when the seed is planted under the ground, it slowly uh, germinates and then it starts giving a, a root and a shoot and it becomes a plant. So let's remind ourselves. So we've gone through the shoot system. We've discussed the stem, the leaves, the flowers and the fruits. Now let's dive into the root system. So let's start. So everything below the ground is the root system. Roots are what provide support to the plant. Without this, the plant cannot stand in that particular place upright. It's something I'd like to ask you. Does the root absorb food from the soil? Think about it. The answer turns out to be no. The root absorbs water and nutrients from the soil, but it does not absorb food from the soil. We just talked about who makes food for the plant. It's the leaf that makes food for the plant, not the roots absorbing food. The roots just uh, absorb water and nutrients. Do you see these uh, tiny, tiny hair-like stuff on the root? They're called root hairs. They help with absorption, absorbing nutrients and absorbing water. Here are two different types of roots. The first one, yes, that looks like a carrot. That's called a tap root. And uh, the tap root stores food and water. So tap, root, uh, tap roots have a lot of starch. They have a lot of water stored inside. Yes, carrots are tap roots. We'll come to examples soon. The tap root grows vertically only. It does not grow sideways, right? Whereas on the other hand, the root that we have on the right hand side, the fibrous root, it doesn't store any food. It just is there for support and it grows vert it grows horizontally and vertically, like both directions. Okay, let's get into examples. What are some examples? So examples are carrots, radish, and beetroot, mango. All of these have tap roots. Uh, and if you noticed, Carrots and radish look exactly like the root there. Yep. Let's go to examples for the fibrous root. Rice has fibrous roots. Maize and wheat have fibrous roots. And uh, yep, that's it. Now we come to the second part of the video, classification of plants into different types. Plants are, plants are classified into trees. Here's a picture. Shrubs. Let's get a picture. Yep. Herbs and vines. Trees are the largest of the lot. They range from 3 to 60 meters in height. Trees have a thick stem called the trunk. 
and uh, branches of trees start after a particular height you can see these lines right that shows that the branches start after a particular height trees live really long it could be 10 years 20 years 40 years a few centuries it could be really really long examples of trees are mango trees pine trees neem trees lots of examples shrubs shrubs are much smaller than trees they usually range from just two to three meters they don't go grow beyond that height shrubs don't have a trunk but while they don't have a trunk they do have a hard woody stem but branches start off really close to the ground examples are tulsi and rose herbs are the smallest of the lot they have a maximum height of a meter and a half that's it they have flexible stems softer stems they don't have woody stems they have a short lifespan usually a few months at the max a year or two examples are pudina ginger coriander carrot all of those are herbs the last type is vines vines are of two types you have creepers and climbers creepers usually uh, grow horizontally on the ground they spread out an example here is watermelon whereas climbers on the other hand they climb up vertically and grow upright but they do need support like for example a money plant it usually needs a support around which it coils up like you can see in the picture